What is this? I thought we had a black tie event to go to tonight. Oh, oh, we do. We definitely do. But this is called An Evening Alone with You. You did all this for me. This is just part of my little plan to pamper you throughout your virtual pregnancy. <laughs> there may be a surrogate that's carrying our child, but you are still my sexy and beautiful mother of my child. Hmm. And I love you more than anything or anyone. I love you so much. Mm. Mm. Rebecca offered Teresa $10,000 just to leave Harmony. Yep. And she's going to give her a check once a month the rest of her life. For more than that, if she promises never to come back. It's a big chunk of change. I know it, right? So, Teresa's over at the mansion right now deciding whether or not to take her up on her offer. Well, I think she should definitely take it. Wait, come on now. You can't mean that. Yeah, yeah I do. Come on, you guys. There's nothing left for Teresa here in Harmony anymore. She should take that money, use it, and give her whole family a fresh start. Guys, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I just hope Teresa's smart enough to take Rebecca up on her offer and leave town. Hmm. Whew. They don't call them Greek gods for nothing. <laughs> Teresa, so quick, have you made a decision about my offer? Yes, Rebecca, I have made a decision. And I know exactly what I have to do. These CDs, I finally have all the information I need to bring you and your filthy empire down on its knees. For that to happen, you'd have to break the encryption code on each disk. Have you managed to do that, Louise? What to know? You're bluffing. You don't know a damn thing and you never will. You took a big gamble, Louise, and lost. The great unwashed always do. Did I mention I decoded your finance disk? The what? Yeah, that's right, I did. The way I see it, that's only the beginning. I figure I'm well on the way of finding out every dirty, low-down thing you've ever done. Give me the files, Luis. Return my property to me now. So panic I hear in your voice? Because you should be scared. You're going to get what you have coming to you, Alistair, and well, I'm going to get Sheridan back. I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. You know, I'm thinking now that uh, Sheridan and I, we may come visit you in prison because, well, that is where you're going to be for the rest of your life. There's nothing you can do to stop me now, Alistair. Oh, I can stop you, Luis. I can stop you right now. I would hold the hand of the one who could leave my places And kiss the lips of the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of a bird I knew could take me high as breathing You know what my favorite part is? Just seeing you across the table from me, knowing that you're going to be there every day of my life. I mean it. I can't imagine being with anyone but you. Even Teresa? I mean, I married you. Because I was pregnant. We've been through this before. Look, I didn't leave you when we lost Sarah. Even though there was a short time when you wanted me to. Listen to me. I'm here because I want to be. I'm here because I'm committed to you, to us, to our family. The family we're going to have together. We are a family. We have relief and he's our son now. That's right. Right now he... He is our son. And he always will be. Always. 
So, Teresa? Are you going to take my offer? $10,000 for you and your family to leave Harmony and start a new life. A generous check coming to you every month from now on. You can help your whole family. You can help Manuel, Miguel, whatever. You can help put him through college. You can help him raise that child he had with Kay Bennett. You can help the Reese raise the child he had with Beth Wallace. But there's even going to be enough money so you can buy diapers for Mrs. Wallace and the monkey. You can help Pilar. She could retire. She could become a full-time mother to that sister of yours. You know, the one that she pawned off to relatives years ago. Paloma. Yeah. And then there's you, Teresa. When the fox goes with you, the two of you can waste away your lives together in utter peace and quiet in nowhere USA or some third world country. I really don't care. Just as long as you leave Harmony. Because if you leave Harmony, then the big, bad cranes can take over. You see, I'm just afraid that if you stay here, you're going to do something stupid or annoying or both. And if you get on my nerves, I mean, there is no telling what I might do. I mean, look, I've already taken your jobs, your home, your son. And what I might do next, oh my, it might just be too horrifying to imagine. So what do you say? Are you going to take $10,000 and start a new life? Or are you going to stay here, living in some dream world, just hoping that you're going to get little Ethan back? No, Rebecca, I'm not going to accept this offer. What? You heard me. You can just take this and you can shove it in that black hole you call your heart. Why don't you shoot me, Alistair? If I'll fix everything, just go ahead. Why don't you kill me right here in the cop's apartment? Yeah, Hank Bennett, you know. Chief Bennett's younger brother. Oh, yeah, come on. Bang, bang. Hey, I'm dead. And I'll solve all your problems. It would be a start. You'd be out of my way and I'd have my property back. Yeah, well, you know what, though? There is one problem. What problem? Well, Hank. Hank Bennett, you see, um... He knows about the files. Oh, and, um, you know that finance disc? Well, the thing is that, uh, Hank actually has it with him, and he's on his way right now to see Chief Bennett at the police station. You're bluffing. You wish. But like I said, you know, go ahead and kill me. No, oh, no, it's you. It's not like you had anything to lose. And? And the truth is coming out. Nothing you can do to stop me. You and your family are finished. I won't let you destroy me. I won't let you deconstruct everything we cranes have amassed over the centuries. I just won't. Well, it's too late, Allie, baby. You're a dead man walking. Speaking of dead men... You know, if, um... If Teresa does decide to accept Rebecca's offer and leave town, I think I'm going to go with her. You're kidding, right? No, Fox, I'm serious. I mean, I think it would be just great for me and Teresa to get out of this hellhole of a town. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, I just, I, I hate seeing what my mother's doing behind my dad and Simone's back. You know, the way she and Julian are carrying on and sneaking around together and saying it's not what it looks like when I know that it is. It's just, it's crazy, you know? But Whitney, come on. I mean, the truth is, we don't know exactly what's going on with your mom and Fox's old man. You know, frankly, Chad, I, I don't even really care anymore. All I do know is that my saint of a mother is lying about spending time with Julian behind my father's back, and that's just not right. Any kind of deception in a relationship isn't right. Well, no argument there. Look, Chad, don't you see? I, I understand what you're saying now. 
I can't be the one to blow the whistle on my mother and Julian. I can't be the one to drive a wedge between my parents because the bottom line is it's their marriage and they're the ones who are responsible for it. And it could ruin them, your relationship with them forever. And that's exactly why I think it's good for me to leave Harmony with Teresa. I mean, I can't take what's happening with my parents and she can't take what's happening with little Ethan. Losing him to Gwen and Ethan because of Rebecca? No, I think both of us need to leave town. And the sooner the better. That's right, Rebecca. I'm not leaving Harmony. You know, I'd rethink this if I were you. Are you going to make me angrier than I already am? I'm angry, too, Rebecca. I'm angry at you, Ethan, and Gwen for stealing my child. Yeah, well, that and this little pout fest is going to get you nothing. Oh, but that's what you already have. Nothing. Zippo. Nada. Teresa, your whole family has nothing. Look, so before you do anything else stupid or rash, I want to show you something. Uno momento, por favor. Take a look at that. I have more than doubled my original offer. Teresa, with that kind of money, you and your, your family can be the Jeffersons of Rio de Janeiro. Come on. Think about it. Don't be selfish. Do something smart. Do something good. Take the money, Teresa. Take it. You told me I, I'd get this much every month for the rest of my life? Yes. But I want you to think about it. Really think about how you would be set for life. This isn't just about you. It's about your entire family. A family that you claim to love. I think I won't kill you to stop you from destroying the Crane Empire, because I will. And I'll enjoy doing it. Yeah, and like I said, go ahead and kill me if you want. See, I don't care, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd like to live and be with Sheridan, and I know what I'm gonna find on these CDs is gonna prove that you had Dr. Acklin do something to Sheridan to make her forget that she loved me. If I have to die to bring you down, so be it. I would gladly sacrifice my life to know that you have what's coming to you. Such brave words from a corpse in the making. Go ahead. Come on, Alistair. Shoot me. I know you're bluffing. You're still decrypting, Luis. You probably only decoded the list of contents. You don't know a bloody thing. Yeah, I do. You know, I've got everything that's on that finance disk. I'm sure that's enough for the feds to lock you up forever. Luis, you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah, I do. I'm paying you back for all the years of torture you put me and my family through. You think this is about you and your pitiful blue-collar immigrant family, but it isn't. Oh, really? No. No, Luis, this is about the world. The world? So why don't you tell pitiful blue-collar me what it's about, Dad? Do you know what will happen if you destroy Crane Industries? Have you any idea how far our financial and political influence reaches? Well, no, I don't, but I'm sure that you're going to tell me. Luis, if you bring down the Crane Empire, 
the global economy will never recover. It'll make the Great Depression of the 1930s look like a Sunday school picnic. Crane Industries employs millions of workers worldwide. They'll all lose their jobs if Crane Industry goes under. Is that what you want? To bring devastating poverty to innocent people in every country on the planet? Because that's exactly what you'll do if you continue with this quest to destroy me. You won't just be ruining me or the Crane Empire. You'll be destroying the lives of innocent people worldwide. Well, I uh, actually told her to take this offer and stick it in the black hole she calls her heart. <laughs> All right then, Tilo. Tilo like J-Lo. Exactly. I like it. I like the Tilo. So you turned down the offer? Yeah. Um, and then instead of her yelling at me, actually, she, um, she stayed really, really calm. And she upped the offer. So what? Yowza. That's, uh... Oh. oh, my God. That's a lot of coin, Teresa. Yeah, really, it is. Um, well, that could set me and my family up for the rest of our lives, you know? Yeah? So what are you going to do? Are you going to take her up on her offer? I didn't even stop to think about what bringing you and your stinking company down would do to millions of innocent people. I wouldn't have expected you to. And that's not a put down, Luis. It just shows that we see the world differently. I always have to think about how my actions will affect people. Not just my family, my home, but the entire world. That's what comes with power and responsibility. And right now, Luis, you have the power. You have the ability to destroy me. But in doing so, you'll be destroying the lives of so many other people, millions of innocent people. Look, Luis, I'm sure we can come to some sort of resolution concerning my files. You and your family have needs. You want Sheridan back. Teresa wants little Ethan back. Your mother and your younger brother need jobs. I'm sure we can arrange something. You know, you tried to bribe me once before. It didn't work. I'm not trying to bribe you, Luis. You have the power here. I'm just trying to find common ground to satisfy both our needs. I'd like my files back. And in return, I can give you whatever you want. A blank check, for instance. You could take care of your family forever, free from grinding poverty. Your family will be safe, secure, and millions of people all over the world won't have their lives turned upside down. Oh, I don't want to ruin millions of people's lives. Of course you don't. And you don't have to. You're a decent man, Luis. Just give me back my files. Save yourself and millions of innocent people more pain than you can imagine. Honey, don't you ever say that again, and don't you ever doubt yourself. You are a whole woman. You're an incredible woman. No woman, or, or a man for that matter, should judge their worth on, on their ability to reproduce. That's just, that's just one of the things, of the, of the many things that make us who we are. Really? Yes. See, I love you unconditionally. Besides, you are the mother of my child, even though there's another woman that's carrying it. I know you keep saying that, but I... Honey, I... the egg, the egg that is being implanted into the surrogate belongs to you. That baby is a part of each of us. That's true. And let me tell you, just because a man can get a woman pregnant doesn't make that man a father. That all happens when he takes responsibility for the child that he's made and the woman that he's made it with. And a woman that gives birth is, doesn't mean she's a good, responsible parent. But you will be. 
I know you will be. I've seen you with little Ethan. You're so loving with him. Our biological child. Because, uh, you know, I'm tempted because, um, well, this could just help my entire family. You know, it could fix the mess that Rebecca's vengeance caused in the first place. But I can't leave my son. You know, I just, I can't move away from Harmony. I, I can't turn my back on any chance of ever getting him back. Look, um, Teresa, I understand what you're saying. But do you honestly think there is any real chance of you ever getting little Ethan back? I mean, look at what Rebecca's done to you, to your family. If she thought there was any chance of you getting him back, she would torture you even more, right? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what she said. You need to remember that nothing can be done about little Ethan's custody without Gwen's approval, okay? Mm -hmm. She and Ethan adopted the little guy together, and Teresa says she wants you away from him just as much as Rebecca does, if not more. You know, before um, you mentioned Rebecca doubling the offer, I was saying to Fox and Chad that um, you and I should both leave Harmony. You know, we could get a start somewhere new away from all of our problems here. You said that, they, that you leave Harmony with me. Yeah. You know, um, Fox said that he'd come too. No, Whitney, if you leave town with Fox and Teresa, I've got to come too. Really? <laughs> you leave everything and come with me? Yeah, baby, you're my everything. And besides, I can get into us being the four musketeers. <laughs> Oh, I'd pay to see the two of you guys in tights. Well, South Beach here would come. <laughs> Seriously, Teresa, listen. If you take Rebecca up on her offer and you get out of town, Luis can become a cop in another town, okay? And Miguel can get his degree at another university. Your mother would never have to work another day in her life. And you know, Kay would probably come with us, too, so that Miguel wouldn't have to be away from Maria. And while we're at it, Beth would probably come too, so Louise wouldn't have to be away from his son. The only people left here in Harmony would be the Cranes. Sheridan. No. Louise misses her so much already. If only Rebecca's offer had something to do with Louise getting Sheridan back. If only we could get Antonio to understand Louise and Sheridan's love. Then everyone in my family could be happy. So, Luis, what's it going to take? What do you want in exchange for my CD-ROMs? Is it to reunite with Sheridan? Because I know we can find a way to make that happen. Yeah, being with Sheridan would make me happy. Real happy. Good, good. I'm glad we could reach an agreement. Not so fast. I thought we had a deal. Yeah, well, you thought wrong. I don't want a damn thing from you. But you said that Cut you... the crap, old man. I know you'd never make good on your promise to reunite me with Sheridan, help my family, or anything else. You don't give a damn about anyone. If they lose their jobs, if they're starving, it doesn't matter to you. The person you care about is yourself. And that's why I'm gonna destroy you. I'll kill you before I let you destroy me, Luis. What, you think killing me is gonna end this? You think taking these files and walking out of here is gonna end this? Not stupid, Alistair. I've already been making copies of these babies. In fact, I've already emailed them out into cyberspace. So eventually, Hank and Sam are gonna get them. There's nothing you can do to stop me. My God, you have no idea what you're doing. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm stopping you. Sheridan and the baby. Luis and Sheridan. Sheridan and the boat. Sheridan and the dead. Sheridan's nightmares. Sheridan and Dr. Ackland. So sad. Now, how many times you've manipulated your own daughter? And that's not all. I mean, look at some of these. <laughs> what do you got here? Fox and gambling? Ivy's indiscretions? Those aren't records of my manipulations. They're records I keep on my family, on their well-being, their problems, so I can help them. And I'm sure, uh... Oh, Julian's bastard. So, uh, how does this help Julian's well-being? Well, how about this one? Uh, Martin Fitzgerald, my, my father, he's not even in your family, so why did you make a CD of him? Same reason he made all the others, because of all the things that you've done to these people. You're coming here with a gun. 
And you just confirmed all my suspicions. It's over for you, Alistair. Becca, do you ever knock? <sighs> mm. I just love the smell of consummation in the evening. What uh, do you want? Mm. I came to say goodnight and oh. to tell Gwen a little bedtime story. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. <sighs> Okay, Mother, what is going on? Okay. So, once upon a time, there was a ticky tacky taco queen who took us on. So we took care of her. What did you do to Teresa now? Hmm, I think I have finally <sighs> driven her out of town. <laughs> How? Well, I made her an offer she couldn't refuse. Mucho dinero. Enough for Teresa to leave town for good and to take her whole family with her. Well, Mother, I hope it works. But Teresa is like a roach infestation. No matter how many times you think you get rid of it, it comes back. Ugh. Oh, it's apple cider. Well, I take it your bedtime story had a happy ending. Oh, glorious, in fact. Things are just great. Yeah, even though you barged into our room and have no respect for our privacy, yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I don't think life could get better. Hmm. Uh, hello. Dr. Russell. Um, uh, hi, what's up? Now. <laughs> you kidding me, tonight? No, no, that's, uh, that's, that's great news. Thanks, thanks so much for calling. What? What? That was Dr. Russell. Okay. She said that our surrogate, Heather, is at the hospital and wants to have your eggs, your fertilized eggs, implanted in her tonight. Oh, my I God. I can't believe it. Honey, we're going to have a baby. Ugh. <laughs> 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 mm. So my first instinct is to uh, just, you know, tell Rebecca to just go to hell and um, stay here in harmony. You know, that way I could be near my son. I can, I could be there for all those really important things in his life. You know, like, like going to school, um, um, ball games, his first communion. You know what? Gwen and Ethan will probably send little Ethan to boarding school, Teresa. And even if he does stay here, Rebecca's going to go ballistic if she catches you anywhere near him. Okay, but if they do send him to boarding school, then, then I, could, I could just move there. You know, I could, I could get a job in, in the, the town that he's in. No, that's not going to apply to you, Teresa. I mean, Rebecca's going to keep tabs on something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do then. I, I really don't. I don't. I mean, I just, I just want to be near my son. So, can you, you tell me how I can do that? Please? Teresa, it's rough. Wish I could say something. I'm out of ideas. Me too. Same here. Okay. You know what? Mama always taught us that we need to turn to God in times of trouble. So that's what that's what I need to do. I'm going to go to church right now, and I'm going to pray. You know something, Alistair? I've been waiting most of my life to take you down. And that wait's almost over. Well, you're not going to have any more privacy, no more avoiding the press. Now, you're going to be the lead story at 6 and 11. Everyone's going to know how you not only manipulated your own family, but how you manipulated uh, world leaders, Congress, even entire countries. I've given life to many small countries. Yeah, well, that's all over now, isn't it? <laughs> No more uh, suits and cigars there, alley boy. You're going to prison. But you know what? Maybe Bubba will take you to the prom. Yeah. There's going to be no more beautiful ladies at your beck and call, no more private jets, no more limousines, no more mansions. It's going to be a, a number in the federal prison system. Boy, God bless America. I'll kill you before I let any of that happen. Yeah, you, you keep saying that, but I'm not seeing it. You know, Alistair, even you aren't that stupid. Because by killing me, you're just confirming your guilt. 
That's amazing. All these detailed records you kept. You were like the damn Nazis, you know? It files on their atrocities. Well, guess what, Alistair? It's all over for you. And me? Well, I'm gonna get Sheridan back, and the rest of my family's gonna be happy, and well, you're going to prison. Time for Heather to have our embryo implanted so soon. Tonight, honey, we're gonna have a baby. I mean, our baby. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check with the hospital, make sure they don't start without us, okay? okay? Oh, Mother, everything worked out the way you said it would. I mean, I am little Ethan's adoptive mother, and the surrogate is gonna have our biological child. Oh, see, honey, all's well that ends well. Oh, and the best part is there is no way Teresa is ever gonna get little Ethan back or take our child away from us. No way in hell. <laughs> Trisha, you okay? Something wrong? No, no, Fox. Um, actually, nothing's wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm surprised. So, well, why? We've been to St. Margaret Mary's a million times. I, I know, I know, it's just, uh, you know, when, when we walked inside here, I just, I got this, I got this really good feeling, and I just, I haven't felt like this in a while, so. Maybe coming here to pray was a good idea. Yeah, I think definitely you're going to find the answers that you need right here. I do hope Teresa does decide to leave Harmony. It's really best for her, and, um, and I would go with her. You serious? Well, weren't you? When you said that you would go too, did you really mean that? Every word. Whitney, I love you. Okay, I don't want to live without you. So wherever you go, I'm there. If you really want me. Well, I do. I do, baby. That's it. That is it. What? What is it? I know exactly how I can get Gwen to give me little Ethan back. I can make it happen, Fox. I, I can do this. I can get my son back. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, on the day you go to prison, Alistair, it'll be declared a national holiday. There'll be music and fireworks and people will dance in the streets and, and then a crowd will gather and they'll go up Raven Hill to the Crane Mansion. You know, a symbol of power and greed and ruined lives. And then those people you crushed, well, they'll take that mansion down brick by brick. And guess what? I'll be there, because I'll be cheering them on. And then when there's nothing left, the state will make it a park, and all those people you took so much from will have it to enjoy. You can't do this, Louise. You can't. Well, Alistair, I can, and I will. It's over for you. You're finished. I mean, you're going to prison for the rest of your life. I won't let you do this, Louise. I won't go to jail. Alistair, like I said, there's nothing you can do to stop me. You know? The code in these CDs, it's just a formality, and like I said, I've already emailed this stuff out into cyberspace. Oh, it's over for you. You're finished with your last act of evil. In fact, you'll never hurt anyone ever again. You're wrong, Luis. Dead wrong. <laughs>